Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. I'm Jonathan Malone McGrew with Solomar Systems. I'm our Senior Director of Engagement and your host today for this webinar all about digital PDFs, how we deliver them, why we deliver them, and how they really should be inclusive. And we're going to tell you what we mean by that and why it's so important to your brand and why you're going to want to really pay attention to this into the future today and into the future, frankly. So let's not take too much time for introductions, but we want to tell you who's on this wonderful panel. We have a great partner of ours, Common Look. And so first I'm going to start with Dave over at Common Look. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you guys do? Absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan. So I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Strategic Alliances here at Common Look. Been with Common Look um, for now, going on 10 years um, after a career in IT that is longer than I care to admit. <laughs> I moved into digital accessibility and been doing um, digital accessibility for both Common Look and actually for a while I was working for Textile, but then I came back to Common Look. So Common Look is the acknowledged leader in document accessibility. We've been focused on document accessibility for over 21 years now. And we're um, very, I mean, driven around the standards is probably the biggest takeaway from Common Look as far as what we do. Um, we, we've been involved in creating the ISO standards for PDF UA for a long time and then have been focused on our, ensuring that our software and our systems and our tools all meet the standards. That's wonderful. And, you know, I think just acknowledging that you guys have been doing this for 21 years, Solomar's in our 30th, it's it's been important for a lot longer than people realize accessibility, especially around sure. uh, digital documents. And so I also want to introduce your, your great counterpart here, Andrea. And Andrea, tell us a little bit about you and what you do over at Common Look. Thanks, Jonathan. So I work with Dave to uh, manage what we call the enterprise automation channel. Um, but I've been with Common Look at, currently as the enterprise channel manager. Um, for about three and a half years now. So not as long as Dave, but I do come from a very technical background, um, a lot in documents and hardware. So, you know, I've been around this particular industry for a while. Uh, being in the accessibility side of things though has been really rewarding for me. I love the idea of an inclusive environment where everybody can get this information. Um, I think Common Look has been so exclusively focused on the document side of this area because it's difficult, um, it, because it's important. Uh, so we do it and we do it really well. And we try to find great partners like Solomar to do the other things that uh, are you know, part of the industry that we don't want to focus on. So it's really been a rewarding time so far at Common Look. Oh, I so appreciate that. I think we see Common Look very similarly. And that really rolls into our next presenter and uh, chief experience officer here at Solomar, Marianne Rowan. If you know anything about Solomar, you have probably met Marianne at a show <laughs> or seen her on a presentation. So Marianne, introduce yourself. Uh, a little bit about Solomar would be great and why we're partnering with Common Look. Sure, thank you. Uh, yeah, Marianne Rowan and I had the privilege of working with Jonathan. Um, and we really, we manage and support our customer and partner relationships globally. And so we're thrilled to have Common Look as our partner. And we, like Common Look is very focused on accessibility. We're very focused on security and uh, bringing uh, accessible and beneficial documents and data to customers and to their customers. And so we're all about education, so we love to bring information in, do lots of case studies, and we're excited to have Common Look as our partner so we can uh, teach really our customers the importance of accessibility and really how to implement it. And so that's really uh, a lot of what we're about. Yes, and that's really leveraging the 30 years of bringing work in and getting it all the way through print and digital delivery uh, as the world has continued to change. So that actually brings us to our, our teeing off this topic of, of digital PDFs and inclusivity and making sure that accessibility is part of your brand strategy. So uh, what does all that really mean, Andrea? What, what are we really gonna talk about today and why should people pay attention? Thanks, Jonathan. Well, I mean, we should pay attention because 
this it, it's been something that's been out there for a while with the ADA standards in the US and in other countries, there's different standards. But more importantly, it's because you want to deliver the best customer experience that you can. And you know, that needs to have inclusivity. We want to make sure that the information that you're sending out, and you know, there's lots of different channels now, as you as you know. Um, but when you're sending out information, we want to make sure that all of the clients can digest that information, consume it in, in an equal way, uh, and not have anybody being left out. And I do think for a very long time, the idea has been, well, you know, accessibility in the digital space has only been for, you know, a small percentage of people, you know, me, somebody who's fully visually impaired. Um, but the reality is there's a lot of different folks who need to have the ability to have a, you know, assistive technology help them uh, read and consume information. And that's really what uh, we're here to talk about and how we can really make a brand stand out because it is inclusive. That's so important. I, I think it really is more than, than what people really realize. Like you say, you know, I think about, you know, people with ADHD or atten attention deficit disorder. You have people who have low vision. You have people who may just prefer audio. I mean, I, yeah. I love books, but I love listening to them. And so what we're really going to dig into here is, is this idea of tag documents, right? And the reading order that will be in there. And we're, we're going to give you a roadmap to why this is so important and how it it's probably easier than you realize with the new technologies out there especially some of the um, AI and stuff that common look has so Andrea let's let's go a little deeper uh, what what should we say next about this what are people going to want to know about what to look for well, I think, um, you know, the recent events of the past year and a half, you know, with the pandemic and everything becoming even more online than it ever was, has really brought this, this issue to the forefront. Um, and, you know, as to your point, Jonathan, it's not just people with disabilities. Um, I had to homeschool my son during the pandemic, and he uses a lot of you know, things where it would read, uh, read the text to him if he didn't, you know, couldn't read that level or he didn't know the word. Um, so just making sure that digital documents that are going out to, to the public or even internally to your own company employees has the, is properly tagged. Um, when we talk about accessibility in digital documents, specifically PDF format, which we see everywhere, um, you know, the way that that document is constructed and designed uh, from a physical standpoint is important. Uh, things like color and contrast being utilized in a document. Uh, we want to make sure that those are not the only way information is conveyed. There might be somebody who is colorblind, for example, uh, who can't tell that red is, is bad and green is good if that's you know, how it's being conveyed in a document. Um, maybe you have a beautiful, you know, background and logo, but those colors don't contrast well. So somebody who has low vision is going to have a really hard time seeing uh, or reading the text if you don't have the appropriate contact, contrast. And then in a PDF, um, there's a little bit of a misnomer when we talk about assistive technology like screen readers. Um, screen readers and a PDF don't read the physical document. There's actually tags that make up a PDF behind the physical document. And this is where assistive technology actually reads something through a screen reader. Um, and so this is where we spend some time uh, perfecting ways to make sure that those tags are in the correct order so that a document reads the right way, um, that it's the right information so that somebody can actually get equal access and understand what they're reading as opposed to just a run-on sentence where it's just reading words in no particular uh, order or context. One of the things that we're gonna show later in this webinar is an example. So you're gonna mm -hmm. wanna stay tuned, don't click off yet, right? You're gonna yeah. wanna see this bad tagging example or what would be, what I would consider probably common if you haven't done any work with accessibility in your PDF. And then we're gonna okay. show them uh, a good example, an example that's engaging and, and makes that PDF inclusive, right, Andrea? Right, exactly. Um, it, it's pretty painful to read something with a screen reader that has not been properly tagged, as we call it. 
or sometimes it's just not going to read anything. So, you know, when you're sending out those bank statements or whatever it might be to, to clients and they're not tagged, they, they literally cannot use assistive technology to read them, which is a problem. I totally agree, especially just from a brand perspective. I, I want to do a little segue, Marianne, to you to talk about. So you're hearing from Andrea and Common Look why this is so important, um, why, why we want to pay attention to it. Why is this important to us at Solomar? With our customers uh, in common, why, do, why should they be paying attention? Well, sure. We've talked to, to a lot of customers and we do have accessibility as part of our offering. And then come and look as um, we can provide the services as well. So being a PDF centric workflow that Solomar provides, uh, we, we like to make our files automated and optimized both for print as well as digital. And then on the digital side to make things more accessible, um, whether it's, again, I, lo I loved Andrew's examples of low vision and things. Dyslexia. I mean, a lot of people have things that they don't necessarily wear as a tag, but they really can have challenges reading things. So uh, presenting things correctly and, and providing information is really helpful. And then again, Solomar then encapsulates that with security and all the wonderful PDF options uh, that is part of our offer. And so we love to bring this educational idea to our customers and say, this is important, whether it's for your customers, but even your employees uh, to think about now, even people at home who um, you know, may need uh, challenges, whether it's, even if you were to hurt your hand, you may need some assistance in having things read to you or audibly being able to say, you know, things you want to communicate like in an email, for example. So I think it's just the perfect time to bring this, uh, this forward and, uh, and share this with the, our customers. All right, so there are laws and standards that go around accessibility. And well, frankly, that's one of the reasons we love to have our partnership with Common Look. So Dave, I hear you are the guru that we should talk to about this area. What can you tell the folks on the webinar about the, the laws and standards that are really around accessibility when we're talking about PDF and, and all of the aspects that it takes to deliver it? So. We, we like to talk, you know, about the reasons you should do accessibility and, and the inclusion you know, that, you, that it provides for your customers. And, that, and we wish that was the only reason that um, accessibility was done. But the reality is there are legal requirements in pretty much every country now around digital accessibility. Um, here in the U.S., um, for the longest time, it was Section 508. And I think that goes all the way back to 2001 when that first came out. And when that law came out, you know, a lot of the federal agencies were rapidly working on their digital accessibility. And then when there were no real ramifications for not doing so, they stopped doing a lot around it. So there was a lot of back and forth. What's happened over the last couple of years is Section 508 got refreshed a couple of years ago. So now it's got a much stronger presence as far as the federal government. But the ADA laws are probably the biggest change is when the ADA started being applied um, to digital accessibility, not just, you know, a wheelchair ramp getting into your building or crosswalks or other things that we think of for physical, you know, access to a building. But when now that everybody's digital, you know, you're now digital presence is um, key to accessibility. If I can't go to Walmart online and order stuff to have it shipped to my house, um, I'm being, you know, blocked you know, excluded. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the U.S., the ADA and the Section 508 and Section 504 and some of the other legal requirements are, are big. Um, but, you know, Canada has their Accessible Canada Act um, that basically, I think, go, and the AODA is another one in, in Ontario. The EU has their Web um, Accessibility Directive. Um, same kind of thing, you know, putting accessibility into the forefront, putting in requirements and, and into the laws so that, you know, organizations, you know, can start adding accessibility because they're legally required to as well as it's the right thing to do. So the other side of it, of, you know, beyond the laws is, you know, the standards. How do we ensure that a document is accessible and that if I do it or you do it, we're both going to do it hopefully the same way because we're trying to meet one of the international standards. So there's two standards that are called upon by the laws. So that's typically the ones that are, that are used by organizations trying to make sure their documents are accessible. Um, the W3C um, or the World Wide Web Consortium W3C 
has developed something called WCAG and the WCAG standards have been out for many years and they continue to get enhanced. Um, originally it was 1.0 and then it went 2.0 and now it's 2.1 and they're working on 2.2. So these standards continue to advance what, are, what needs to be done in a document to make it more accessible to work with screen reader technologies and assistive technologies of all kinds. Um, and so that's, you know, one of the pushes, for, you know, the laws will get written to say, okay, it needs to meet the WCAG standards. And because they're moving so rapidly now, um, for many years, the laws were, were pointing to very old standards and they didn't, they didn't update it. So because of that, technology had moved way beyond um, you know, where the laws and the requirements were. So now um, the ISO has gotten into the game and they also have something called PDF UA, which is more of an international standard. And you know, the ISO typically is an international organization anyways. So now that these requirements are out there and these standards are out there, you know, software tools, systems can be built to ensure that your documents, when they are generated and, and saved as PDF, that the tagging structure is going to work with all the assistive technologies because it's, it's a standard-based you know, remediation. That's so important. And, and actually, I wanted to just uh, say two things I want you to comment on. I, I think that when we talk about the law side of things, we don't want to be negative, but it's important to understand that there are impacts to not providing these kinds of assistive technologies to customers, right, Dave? Yes, there's, and there's been a lot of famous lawsuits that have been going around, especially in the last couple of years. Um, and, and, and they're not 100% on the side of accessibility, but they're moving in that direction. I think there was a recent one with Winn-Dixie down in Florida that they went the wrong direction, but the majority of these lawsuits have all gone towards the, um, you know, the side of accessibility and the requirement for, to meet the ADA. Um, you know, unfortunately, the ADA does not specifically list digital accessibility, and that's been one of the, the reasons why these lawsuits have been coming out is because it wasn't clear, wasn't defined as, as mm -hmm. best practice for how this works. So because of that, um, these lawsuits have really put a lot of teeth into this. So it's made it more, you know, so you, you do this for the right reasons, but you're probably gonna eventually, if you're not doing it, you could find yourself in a legal situation. Yeah. It will help you also reduce liability, right. which well, is another good reason to do it. <laughs> and that's a great, great point, Andrea. I mean, Marianne, we come from it, and I think Common looks very similar from a relationship culture. And so mm -hmm. we build these great relationships with our customers and our partners, but we tend to find that our customers build really great relationships with their end customers. And so Andrea, you and I were talking on a different uh, call about once before about how important this should be to that relationship, right? It's not just about the money that might get spent on fines. It's really about whether somebody comes back to your brand, which is why we right. say in the, in the title, this is important for inclusivity and brand yeah. loyalty. I mean, it's more than just complying. Right. And so like you think about the movement for a lot of companies going, you know, becoming green companies, um, you know, lowering their carbon footprint and, and they're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And, and they, they know that's going to help their brand really stand out and create that brand loyalty, loyalty from their clients to, to the company. And I think inclusivity and accessibility are going to do the same thing. Um, you really don't want to alienate any part of your client base um, if you can avoid it. Um, so there's a lot of great reasons to make accessibility as part of doing business. Uh, not an afterthought, you know, we, you got a litigation or something, not something that's not budgeted for. It needs to be something that really companies are looking at in the long term, um, budgeting for it and, you know, just really trying to get ahead of it. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, companies find it overwhelming. They find it a bit overwhelming because it's digital documents like what we're talking about today, but it's other areas as well in the digital space. And, you know, to be honest, typically digital documents has not been something, it, it was an actual lower expense. Hey, I can email this document or send it out digitally. I don't have to post it anymore, um, but they do have to make it accessible. So, you know, just getting ahead of that and making that part of your, you know, your daily business is really going to set some of these brands apart for sure. I think that's important. 
Um, one of the other things that I think is important is is really seeing why or hearing why yeah. uh, this this is a problem for people who are trying to use assistive technology when something isn't tagged correctly. And we're going to talk about the tagging part. What really what you mentioned before drives the screen readers in that kind of misnomer that it reads the screen magically like some sci-fi movie, but. What I think we should do next, if everyone's in agreement, is let's show what a bad experience is like. So we're going to play a video here and cut to what screen reading's like, probably for 90% of, of documents out there that haven't had accessibility work. So take a look. So Libank Platinum Visa. Graphic 3 Blue Lines SOLI Bank. Monthly Statement 123 Main Boulevard Bullet San Diego, California 92101 If you have any questions regarding this statement, please call Link solibank.solimarsystems.com At tat 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 Sean Connery Credit Limit Available Credit 1007 West Street, $10,000-9,004.63, San Diego, California, 91903-4112, current balance $995.37. Payment Dates and Balance Summary Payment total current previous interest payment slash purchases slash new due date min payment min payment balance May 28th slash 21 amount plus credits charges plus balance May 28th 21 $19.91, $19.91, $55.22.25.25.99, $93.15, $995.37. So as you can see on that sample video of a PDF that wasn't tagged correctly, um, there were a lot of issues with it. Um, as you can see, it was bouncing around the screen. So if somebody got their digital statement and they're trying to find their balance or they're trying to find you know, their account information, you know, th they would have to listen to it as it's reading across the screen, left or right, going down. You know, there are no heading levels in that document. So they can't use their keyboard to navigate down to heading level one or heading level two, have it read to them so that they can quickly find the information they're looking for. You or I, who would look at that document, would just say, oh, there's my balance. Okay, I can, you can just scroll down quickly reading it. But when you're using assistive technology like a screen reader, you're using the keyboard to navigate. There's no mouse and there's no visual cues. So they are using um, the technology that's there. So when it's not tagged correctly, the experience is not a good one whatsoever. Yeah, that was painful to actually watch, even that sh short snippet. So... I feel for people who have to, to constantly navigate those types of documents with their assistive technology. But we're all about solutions here, right, Dave? Yeah. So what do we have for them uh, to, to solve this problem? What's coming up? So what we wanna show now is a properly tagged, the exact same document, but now properly tagged with the correct heading levels that have been defined in the document with the reading order correct. So it's not bouncing around left to right, you know, reading addresses and then, or, or reading things like um, the barcode that it tries to read because you can't read a barcode. But, you know, so this next example that we're gonna show you now is a properly tagged PDF. This one is, you know, WCAG compliant and meets the standards, but more importantly, the user experience is what it needs to be. So with that, let's play the second video. Heading level one, page one, so Libank Platinum Visa monthly statement. If you have any questions regarding this statement, please call 1-800-555-1234-619-555-1235-TTY. Service 1-800-555-4321. Sean Connery 1007 West Street San Diego California 91903 
Heading Level 2 Payment Dates and Balance Summary Payment Due Date May 28, 21 Total Min Payment $19.91 Current Min Payment $19.91 Previous Balance May 28 $21.55.25 $25. Interest Amount Plus $2.22 Payment Slash Credits $55.25 Purchases Slash Charges Plus $993.15 New Balance $995.37 Wow, that, what a difference. That was so much better, so much clearer. Um, and I think everyone would, would agree with that. So Andrea, um, tell us a bit about the technology and how did you make um, that document look so much better? Well, you know, that's what Common Look does. So we spent 21 plus years now perfecting software and just our knowledge base on how to do this and do it quickly um, and also staying on top of the standards. So, you know, the main thing with PDF tagging, as we keep calling it, is making sure that those tags behind that physical document, there's a couple of main things. One, reading order. And, you know, so how was that, you know, that document read in that second video? It was read in the right order based on the content and, and how it should be experienced by somebody. Uh, so that reading order is determined in the tags. We make sure that, that those tags are in the right order. Um, and then we also utilize our, our knowledge and our technology to make sure we have the right kind of tags. As you start getting into more complex elements in a PDF, more than just text, for example, you might have tables. Um, and in fact, there's a lot of times you have tables, especially in a financial document. So if you just read the, the text of a table, it's not gonna have any context for someone. They're not gonna understand what this information is. So it really has to be tagged properly so that it has proper column and row headers. And then the table data uh, is associated with those. So somebody understands what they're reading, um, what that data actually is. Um, another thing, and I think a lot of folks are familiar with this, is when you're using images or you know, charts, any type of graphic in your document, mm -hmm. um, obviously a person who can't see won't be able to see those images. So something needs to be read to them. We call it alternative text. So alt text for short is added to anything, any images or graphics that convey information. Um, and, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of other elements in PDFs, but uh, long story short, that's really what Common Look does. We, we perfected ways to do this um, in, in, you know, one-off environments. If you have, you know, just one document at a time, um, but we know that entities and companies have a lot of backlog. They might have a lot of archived documents that they want to be able to make sure they're accessible before they're shared with the public. Um, and so how do you tackle these big, giant, you know, backlogs of documents and make sure that they're tagged properly? Oh, I think I Dave can speak to that. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, I think there's, there's a, a word coming up that anyone in the print and digital space is going to be familiar with, which is automation. But... But just a little segue, Marianne, I, I, when she said archive, I kind of saw you kind of light up a little bit because this is a big, big challenge for our customers at Solomar because we handle all types of, of print and digital communications coming through. Uh, they might be financial service providers, they might be uh, commercial printers, but they, they might have to keep things and re-deliver them to customers on demand, right, or, or on request. So, Absolutely. I mean, do mm -hmm. you see that that's a huge part of this and being inclusive is, and, and do you have to do the whole archive or how does Solomar help deliver what Common Look can then, you know, make inclusive? Right, right. So a lot of our customers um, about, are both implants as well as print service providers. So what if I took a, a large bank, for example, one of our clients, um, think about a bank probably has mortgage statements, certainly my mortgage statement from years ago. And if I were to request that, um, most likely they would just send it to me. Hopefully they're using some of our technology. What we teach them or try to teach them is first of all, redact. So we're always talking about, you know, remove my social security number, remove my birth date, things that don't need to be delivered. So make that document more, uh, more secure, but also now make it accessible. It, it could be a preference-based system 
so you uh, customers can actually have where I would prefer to get accessible uh, documents received. And so we can extract those from the from the archive dynamically, run them through the tagging, and then deliver a secure and accessible document. And that's the beauty of what Solomar and Common Look can offer. But the key is don't do this by hand yes, in manual automation. processes. <laughs> right. So just, just, just what we both offer, right, is the automated template. So it's yeah. really a, a, a you set up a template one time, and then when that document comes through, it finds every reference of like my social security number or my birth date, and it can find every reference that should be uh, tagged and made accessible. So yes, it's it's uh, you definitely don't want to do this one off. I would be the first one to miss many many references here <laughs> and there. So we try to make this yeah automated, and then and that's also managed and secured then. And the, the automation, though, has to be seamless, right, Dave? I mean, we don't want it to be automated on the Solomar side and then not potentially automated on the Common Look side. So I know you have a lot of technologies uh, behind the scenes there. Can you talk a little bit about the automation of the accessibility and how that makes it, you know, pardon the, the phrasing, but more accessible to businesses and brands to deliver accessibility. I mean, that's a key point here, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what we've done at Common Look is really looked at, you know, what were the various aspects of, you know, from a technology standpoint to ensure the documents are accessible. So we've taken a number of our tools that were originally were available as one-off type tools for an individual person doing remediation work and we've embedded those technologies into server-based tools. So for example, testing. So let's say you do pull that document out of an archive and you redact it, but you're not sure if it's accessible. So it can be run against an API that will actually test it and come back and say, yes, it's been tagged correctly. It's an accessible document. So you can deliver it to your customer or no, it needs to be made accessible. And now it can go you know, the other fork in the road. Um, what we've done through our automation technologies is we've been developing now an AI-based tool um, that really has expanded what's possible now from, from an automation of accessibility. Um, the, the typical format for automation in the past has been you have to build a template to generate the PDF with that adds the tagging structure. But you know when the documents have already been created, when they're in an archive, when there, there are millions of them, um, this AI technology is really advanced from the standpoint that we can take those documents, we can run them against the AI tool and generate a properly tagged PDF um, that can be delivered to your client on the fly. So that's really the what's exciting about where this technology has taken the industry because for the longest time, this just wasn't possible. So it inserts right into the workflow, which I think to your point, Jonathan, you know, we don't want, we don't want clients to have to recreate their workflows um, or, you know, disrupt the workflow in any way. So having the ability to insert accessibility testing and, and to Dave's point, the tagging um, right from the workflow and then direct it to the right place. Uh, maybe you don't want tags at a certain point in that workflow because it's going to the print, you know, commercial print engines and you don't want that extra layer. Um, but when it's going to go down the digital delivery, uh, that's where we can insert the, the accessibility automation tools to make sure that that digital delivery is accessible. So I think, you know, this technology, which to Dave's point, hasn't really existed up to now. Uh, everybody wants the easy button for PDF accessibility, and it honestly just hasn't really existed. Uh, so this has really been our focus for a number of years now, and, and we're able to bring this in and partner with Solomar to, to bring that to the clients that really need it. And I think that's so important, uh, what you just said about that where in the workflow it can insert logically. That That's something that's near and dear to Marianne and I's heart because we know what problems our printers have, our print service providers and our implant customers have when they're trying to get stuff to print without extra tags or extra information in there. And so what's amazing about bringing these two technologies together is we can logically split the workflows, we can insert, uh, like you said, logical points of diversion. And if you're a printer and you're watching this and you're, you're thinking, well, this sounds kind of complicated, it's not any more complicated than you mailers out there who pass mailing optimization data off to our partners who do that kind of postal optimization and then pass it back to your Solomar system. It's identical. 
It is just another diversion in another system picking up the file and doing work on it and then sending it back automatedly. We can track it all, we can report on it all. And you have not only security, but you have inclusivity. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important. But Andrea, Dave, uh, I don't know which one of you would want to talk to this, but you also offer some more custom services. So Solomar is all about productized, configurable solutions that we release globally. And we, we try not to do too many services, but with accessibility, sometimes you need that little, mm -hmm. that hand touch, right? That white glove treatment. Do you guys offer that to your, your customers around digital PDFs? We absolutely do. Um, and it's really due to, you know, the, the complexities of documents and also, um, you know, what documents that are appropriate for automation versus say like a one-off marketing document that's, a, you know, you don't print a million of them. You may print a million of them, but there's only one version of that document or small number of multiples of that document where something like that statement or that invoice or that mortgage, you know, document, that is done in volume and it's generated, you know, and, and you want something that's going to be able to keep up with the speed and not slow down your system, slow down your workflow. So yeah, Common Look has been very involved with our clients as far as um, determining, helping them determine what, what's the best tool or the best technology to meet their requirements and then to help them put it into operation. Um, the AI tool and all of our automation tools are, are really built with the customers, you know, because it's your documents, it's your content. And it's gonna be the, like, for example, the models that are used in the AI tool are built from your documents. We actually teach the AI tool from your documents with the proper tagging already in documents to teach the tool, this is how you tag this mortgage statement. So it's very much a hand in hand. We work with the clients to make it all come out. I tell you, every time I hear about art artificial intelligence in workflows, um, it it just tells me how far we've come in, in yes. the world. Uh, we, we see it impacting how stuff moves around a production environment. We see it how um, we're reacting to documents like this and how we're able to serve them up and make it easier for brands to, to really provide that best customer experience. And I think that's both our company's goals is our, our end goal is to make sure that you shine or your customers shine when when that communication is received by the end customer. And we, we have always focused on print in the early years and then digital really has, has come uh, roaring through the door with the, the latest you know, right. pandemic that we dealt with as Andrea mentioned. But this is so important for the future because mm -hmm. electronics not going away. We all use our mobiles and we're all on the go and we're working anywhere we want to really, depending on where our companies will let us. So we, we need communications where and how we need them, right? It's not want, it's, okay. it's really need. Well, Absolutely. team, I think this has been informative for everyone on this webinar. I hope uh, you watching agree. What I'd love to challenge you to do is to reach out to us um, about your document accessibility needs. And mention this webinar, when you get in touch, whether you get in touch with Common Look or you get in touch with Marianne and I at Solomar, mention this webinar, tell us this is where you started so that we know that um, you were really inspired by this idea of inclusivity for communications, especially around digital PDFs being delivered to people. And uh, we really think your brands will, will see a huge benefit from this. So with that, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us on this webinar. It has been uh, really a great topic and I hope to do more webinars with you all in the future.